Welcome to week four of our Connect group on sharing our faith. Before I forget, next week is a social break for all the groups. And so for you, decide what is best for you. Does that mean taking the week off? Does that mean just getting together for dinner, going out to eat? Whatever is best for you, group, your group. Have a, have a discussion tonight, today, and decide what's best for you. And so next week, it's on you. What's best for you and how can your group continue to grow best? This first four weeks, this one kind of wraps up our first four weeks of this study, and it's one we've morphed together on the Who's Your One study and another uh, generic uh, idea of, of sharing your faith through North American Mission Board. And so this wraps up the first four weeks. We have our social break, and when we come back, we're gonna be jumping into a study on the three circles. It's a different way of sharing our faith, and so we've, we've pulled this together through different styles, different ways of, of sharing our faith because I think it's important to, to me because we talk about this idea of sharing our faith, but on a Sunday morning, we don't have time to practice that or, or study how we do that or even just talk to one another and make mistakes in our language and think, I could have said that better. That's why I love that we're having this opportunity in small, intimate, safe environments to be able to practice. What does it mean? And as we do that, there's not just one cookie cutter scenario in this, but it's, it's how in the moment, as God brings us these opportunities through relationships, how do we share our Lord with those around us? One of the leaders of the North American Mission Board said that the goal here is not that you do it the way that we say you do it. The goal here is that you engage the people you know with the gospel of Jesus Christ wherever you go. And in that, they were also talking about the idea of discouragement and encouragement, that discouragement means taking courage out. But today and through this study, I pray that you find encouragement of placing courage within. You go back to Deuteronomy 31.6. Moses was near the end of his life and God had told him, you are not gonna be the one to lead my people into the promised land, but Joshua is. So Moses gets up and he gathers all of Israel, all the people of God around him. And he says in that moment, I won't be the one to lead you into the next steps, the next phase of your life. But he says, take courage, be strong and courageous. And so in that very moment, as he's standing in front of the people, he calls young Joshua up and he says, Joshua, you are the one that God will lead these people through. And so he looks at young Joshua and he says in that moment to be strong and courageous, placing courage within the people. Friends, I pray that you continue to find courage and strength in the story of what God is doing in and through you as you then take that to others around you. And we find ourselves hesitant at times. Just think though of Moses in that moment, you take him back to young Moses. Oh, but God, I'm my tongue is sluggish, I stutter, I can't speak publicly. And God said, I'll take care of you. Look at Jeremiah, he wrote, I don't know how I'm too young. I'm too young, I'm too old. I don't know them well enough. I don't know how the excuses of sharing our faith and, and doing what God tells us to, those excuses can stack up pretty quickly, can't they, friends? So the question then turns to how? We look back at some of the early church moments, and I love when we look in Acts chapter 18. Paul is there, and we see that, that he's living out his trade as a tent maker. And so throughout the week, he's doing his job, just like most of, of you. He's just earning a living to take care of himself, to take care of those around him. And so as he goes through his week as a tent maker, a tradesman, he works hard every day and through that he's having these relationships and building these relationships and i guarantee you through that he was inviting them to the the synagogue because we learned that on the sabbath he was teaching and challenging the jews and the greeks and so he was inviting to them to these holy moments to be able to invite them into the gospel and so we see even in this moment of acts chapter 18 through paul that it's as you go you invite and you share and while I do think that God can use any method or any strategy, if you, if you want to call it that, I would argue that the most effective form is not a random invite, such as the time Sarah and I were walking around downtown with the kids. And 
I think it was a Saturday, and so these people kept following us, asking us, where are you going to go to church tomorrow? Why don't you come with us? Would you go to church? And finally I said, well, you know, I'll be preaching at Chancellor Baptist. I'd love for you to come and worship with us tomorrow. But it was one of those moments where some would call it persistent, some would call it annoying. It depends on how optimistic, pessimistic you are in the moment. But I would say, though, that the most effective invite strategy is for those that you know their name. Not people you were just following along the street continuing to, to ask, but a true and personal invite. Not a let's see how many we can get, but I know you and I love you and I know your name and I would love for us to worship our God together. I think at the time I was invited to a meal at a church at a campus ministry it wasn't just a random invite. It was by another student who knew my name and invited me for a specific purpose or invited into a connect group or a Bible study group. It wasn't a random invite. It was somebody who knew me, who knew my name, who loved me and invited me in when I desperately needed it to study the Bible. Just the other week, Kirsten and my connect group, which shout out to my connect group. I love you all. Mine might be the best. But just throwing that out there. We can argue that later. But anyway, as Kirsten was able to share a time, even just a couple weeks ago as we were in this study on being on FaceTime with one of her friends all the way in Florida. And they were talking about church and talking about faith and her friend hadn't been connected into church for, for years, didn't even know where her Bible was in that moment and talking about the fears of stepping back into church. And, and Kirsten was able to place courage inside of her friend to step into church and to trust God, even though the husband wasn't even sure about it and all of the dynamic that's within that. And that next Sunday, Kirsten's friend all the way in Florida that she specifically invited to go to church, went and got her 85 year old next door neighbor and they went to church together. It was a personal invite and amen. It happened even states away. You see, I think a strong invite culture is so very important. Not just an invite to church, but an invite, the greater invite, and that's to the gospel. This happens through relationships, this happens through conversations, and it's as you go. Now while we're going to continue studying, even for the next six weeks, in this study on how to share the faith, Today, your, your leader has these invite cards. There's enough in your group for everybody to have at least one, hopefully multiple. And so it's got a, a QR code scanned straight to the church website. But for someone you know, who do you know their name? Maybe you've had coffee with them, you've dined with them, they've been to your house, to your next door neighbor. Who is it that you need to invite to the church and potentially to the gospel? I love you, friends. Have a great connect group, and I'll see you soon.